Good evening, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome all of you back to another Bloodborne OST reaction. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, okay, to make up for what was undoubtedly the most nothing real fight uh, when I talked about the Witches of Hemwick, we are instead going to go back to the very beginning of the game. Now, Yes, it is, of course, entirely optional about which boss you do fight first. You can either fight the Cleric Beast or you can fight Father Gascoigne. And Father Gascoigne is probably the much better fight. It's a, it's more of an actual tutorial fight uh, than the Cleric Beast because um, Gascoigne will teach you like the importance of like trying to use your gun in the fight. It will also introduce you to ideas about not only bosses having second stages, but how... A second stage could help shift the dynamic as opposed to just adding other moves to avoid. That's the problem, like, with uh, other uh, uh, from software games had before this is that whenever a boss would have a second stage, it was just extra moves and you've got to be a li you've got to handle things with a bit more caution. In something like Bloodborne, however, having a second phase completely alters the dynamic of the fight because you could be hunter. Uh, hu hunting prey to the prey being the hunted, uh, the hunter, or they introduce an entirely different like mechanic, like a sword, uh, like in Ludwig, and you now have to contend with uh, something a bit more uh, honourable, and you have to you have to go about uh, certain fights in a very particular sort of way, which is also why Gascoigne gets immediately ranked higher than the cleric beast. Now. You fight the cleric beast uh, on this huge bridge, and it's not one of those bridges that, like that can be destroyed. It's just, it's it's just a very uh, narrow sort of corridor. It's it's almost this. It's like fighting the Taurus demon from the the first Dark Souls game. The only difference this time is that, well, one thing I actually will automatically give praise to the cleric beast for is that it does have a much more wider ranging uh, move sets uh, in how it will swipe at you it will howl at you it will leap up and stomp on you it has for it again for like pretty much the first real boss it's surprisingly very very varied and it will give you the you the player the ultimate chance to see uh how you can handle something really big because leading up to the fight you usually have to fight, face giant ogre like uh, beings with hammers or like werewolf uh, crossed with giant cats uh, sized enemies but this is the first time you're really going up against something that isn't going to take a couple of swings to take down you will need to uh, pull out a little bit of ingenuity to this and nowhere else does that uh, feeling of like dread and horror that Bloodborne is so famous for then when the music hits because we first see we as you travel through through Yarnum and you see how the place has basically been turned to hell, people gather around ready to ambush ambush you. Dogs are locked in cages, only to be released to kill you, and you think you've overcome a lot of surprises and you think you're ready, but you're not because this is just how the game begins, and it begins by. Having a having a song that almost plunges you straight into hell. Don't believe me? Well, let me demonstrate. almost sounds like it's being howled howled as uh, being as almost one of the great ones <laughs>
Not too sure if I can ever remember what the gurgling sound effects were necessarily for the fight, but yes, what I can only do, what I absolutely love about like just the again, it's I think it is down maybe it, it, like I know probably the cleric beast was an in reality an actual descendant or at least something resembling uh, a great one, but I do um. I do bizarrely like the idea that uh, perhaps this was just uh, 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 this was almost like the beginning uh, of uh, somebody becoming a great one. I don't necessarily uh, uh, for uh, lo uh, d look down on the idea that uh, this was again. Maybe this is the sort of like the only problem like the early games had is that. Um, you don't you don't you don't really suspect like an, an opening boss could have like an an ultimately interesting or like a very unique sort of um backstory because it is meant to be just the opening of the game. But that's sort of also why I think that I I, I only give my impression only give my impression that I think that in reality the uh the Climate Beast was meant to be uh just it's it's just all mate all Okay, few. Uh, uh, okay, let me try and organize my thoughts a little bit. I don't really want to say anything because of like how you, the game ends and without spoiling it. But I like to imagine in some way, this was a previous player we fought in the game, and or no, a previous a guy who previously beat this game, and this is what he ultimately became, howling in pain and just making us sure we. Maybe it's a foreboding warning. Maybe he doesn't want us to get anywhere out of Yarnum. As in, turn back, don't go any forward. I know that's maybe a little bit looking too much into it, but I always did think that Bloodborne had even more lore behind it. There's even more mystery and suspense and disbelief that goes into Bloodborne than even we know about. And... Now that we look back on it, and probably even looking forward, there's probably even a lot more to add than ever before. Some stuff that is only speculative, some stuff that might actually make sense. But with all that being said and done, I hope all of you guys enjoyed uh, this uh, reaction to the uh, Cleric Beast uh, from Bloodborne. And... Is there any more, like, maybe there is an actual, like, law to this, and maybe there is a little bit more that I, even I aren't not seeing. And I hope all of you guys uh, to check us out again in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye for now.